Hey there, before we get into the episode, I wanted to make sure that you've grabbed our free wedding planning resources that I made specifically to help guide you through the overwhelming details of planning a wedding. Head over to planningcollective.com forward slash free hyphen guides and sign up for totally free resources on expensive wedding planning mistakes, the first four things every engaged couple needs to do, a full backyard wedding or unique venue wedding planner, and our pre-wedding worksheets that every couple needs. All four of these downloads are currently available and we're working on some more fun and of course free resources coming your way soon. Again, you can find all of them at planningcollective.com under the free guides tab. See you there. Kate McClellan, pro wedding planner with over 16 years of experience helping more than 400 couples down the aisle. I started Planning Collective to help all couples get through the overwhelm of wedding planning by sharing my actionable tips and tools that I've used over the years working with my clients. We'll focus on getting rid of what I like to call FOWO, the fear of wedding oversight. This is an unfortunate condition that almost every couple will suffer from at some point. Let's get you back to enjoying the planning process. Here we go. Kate here. Welcome back to another episode of the Wedding Planning Collective podcast. I am so excited for today's episode because we're going to talk all about some of the 2024 and 2025 wedding trends that we're looking forward to. Let's get right into it. When it comes to fashion, here are four things that we're looking forward to in the next couple of years. The first is veils. While veils never went away, they're definitely having a big comeback moment. I'm loving that we're seeing some fun and unique veils incorporating bows, pearls, and even color. Number two, speaking of bows and pearls, we've been seeing this 80s and 90s trend coming back in full force. Who doesn't love a pearled glove or a cute bow on your veil or the back of your shoes? Definitely keep an eye out for some fun ways you can incorporate these two things into your wedding day. Number three is wedding dress separates, and I am loving this trend. This could mean either a two-piece dress, detachable sleeves, gloves, or even a cape. And number four, flower appliques were one of my favorite early aughts fashion trends, and I'm so excited that they're now coming back into the wedding world. They can be small and delicate or embrace the main character energy they deserve. Moving on to trends with floral and decor, we have four things that I really wanna point out are becoming trends for 2024 and 2025 weddings. First, when it comes to personal flowers, meaning the wedding party bouquets, boutonnieres, and corsages, we're seeing some fun things coming up. Instead of a full bouquet, you can give your wedding party a single stem of a favorite bloom instead. Corsage cuffs for the moms and grandmas are fantastic and made to look more like a piece of jewelry rather than your old school homecoming corsage. And finally, if you're looking for an alternative to the boutonniere, I'm loving the floral pocket square as an alternative. If you haven't seen them yet, give Floral Pocket Square a Google and you're going to fall in love with the trend too. And the second trend we're seeing in regards to floral and decor is lots of color being incorporated into your floral design. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love the creams, whites, and greenery. It's an absolutely classic look and will always be a favorite. But I think every wedding pro is excited to see more unique color palettes coming into the mix. If you're too nervous to fully embrace a super colorful wedding, you can add pops of color into fun, unique locations. You can keep your flowers neutral, but add a fun pattern napkin to the table or a cool backdrop to your photo booth. Number three, if you're looking for something interactive, champagne towers are a fun thing to do after cocktail hour and they make for a great photo op. If champagne isn't your thing, you can use different drinks instead. I recently saw an espresso martini tower but you'll need to be very careful about that if you're wearing a light colored dress. If you are gonna do any kind of champagne tower of sorts, two quick tips or warnings for you first. Make sure that you have the coupe style glasses as they are not the standard champagne flutes that most venues have. A champagne tower will not work with a standard champagne flute. And the second tip, make sure to check with your venue to see if they'll allow it because they can be pretty messy and ask what the cost of the champagne or drink would be. If they don't allow the actual pouring of the champagne through the tower because of the mess it will make, 
Ask Him if they will allow you to do it for a staged photo, meaning you can have the glasses pre-filled except for that top one or two tiers. That way you can get the photo moment without the mess. If we're being totally honest, it's all for the picture anyway, right? And when it comes to the cost, if you're at a traditional venue, it's likely that the price of a bottle of champagne is going to be pretty heavily marked up. It might make doing a champagne tower a bit out of budget, but they might have some flexibility with you supplying the champagne if it's just for this photo moment. And the final trend in the floral and decor category is going to be looping in the audio guest books like After the Tone that have been popular for the last couple of years. But what I'm loving is that we're seeing a new trend coming to take them to an all new level. But you can certainly place your phone on a cocktail table with an instruction sign. Make sure you always have an instruction sign. If you're looking for something unique, we're seeing some decorative phone booths being added in, which will also help the audio quality for these messages. You can talk to your florist or your venue to see if they have the structure to create a phone booth, and then you can decorate it to match the rest of the vibes of your wedding. If a full phone booth is a little too much for you, setting up a nice table or display area for the phone would be a nice way to get it more attention. Moving on, let's talk about some personal interactive touches. We're seeing more and more couples wanting to include personal experiences for their guests, and I am loving it. First up is called a sip and solve, and they're custom crossword puzzles that you can have made on Etsy or Canva and put out on an easel for your guests to work on during cocktail hour. The questions can be about the two of you and your relationship, or you can include some family and friend trivia to further include them in the day. Make sure to put plastic or glass over it and use dry erase markers so that the wrong answers can be corrected and it can be reused over and over again. Another area to incorporate some interactive activities for your guests is with the place cards. This summer we had a couple do the cutest setup for their place card display and they incorporated their photo booth into the setup. They made a large board with envelopes glued to it with the guest names on the front. Inside the envelopes were their place cards with their table number on it, but before they could take that, they had to take a picture at the photo booth and exchange that picture for the place card. That way the couple got a picture of all of their guests at the wedding, and the guests could also keep a copy for themselves too. Now, when it comes to photos of you guys with your guests, another fun trend we're seeing is called the photo blitz during the reception. Once dinner is over, but before you start dancing, the DJ or band will play one fun, high energy song and you and your new spouse will rush from table to table to get a group photo with the guests at that table. Your goal is to get to each table before the end of the song, which could be a challenge if you have a large guest list. Make sure you talk through the timing of this with your coordinator and vendor team if you're planning on doing this. And finally, if you're looking for a really sweet way to show your guests appreciation, you can write them handwritten notes that can be left at the tables. This can be done per table and the guests can pass the letter around for everyone to read, or you could do individual, couple, or family letters and include them with their place cards. Time consuming? Yeah, but it is such a lovely touch. And my final two trends are additions to your photo and video team, and I think they're going to both be huge in the next couple of years. The first is film photography, and this can either be an add-on to your photographer's digital work, or you can work with a photographer that solely does film photography. It's a very unique look. Film photography typically has a much richer vibe to digital. And if this is something you're interested in, make sure to speak with your photographers about whether or not it's something they offer. More and more are offering this as an add-on to their digital packages, but it's not super common just yet. And the trend I'm probably most excited about is having a content creator as a part of your vendor team. A content creator is in addition to your photographer and videographer, and their job is to capture those natural behind the scenes moments of the day that you'll definitely wanna be able to look back on. And if you love making TikToks or Reels, your content creator will be in charge of capturing and making those for you. You can have videos in mind to make before the wedding and they will make it happen. Or you can just sit back and let them surprise you with what they create. If you're interested in adding a content creator to your team, check with your photographer and videographer first. They may be able to add this service in, but more importantly, they may have concerns about working with a content creator on the wedding day. The dynamic between the three roles can be tricky and your photographer might have some concerns about the content creator interfering with their process. 
This is an important reason why you want to make sure that your content creator has experience working with weddings as they can be a tricky relationship to navigate. You certainly don't want them getting in the way of your professional photos or videography, and that's what they're most concerned about. We worked with Day Of by Jules this summer, and it was a fantastic experience. She was beyond respectful of the photographer and videographer and created some amazing content for the day. You can find her on Instagram at dayof.bijewels. And there's my list of wedding trends for 2024 and 25. What other trends are you looking forward to? Head on over to the Wedding Planning Collective Facebook group and let me know. And if you found this episode or any of our previous podcast episodes helpful, would you take a quick second to rate and review? It will really help us get these practical and real life wedding planning tips to more couples. And it would absolutely make my day to know we're helping with your planning. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next episode. Hey there. Thanks so much for listening to the Wedding Planning Collective podcast. Before we get started with the episode, I wanted to let you know about our all new Wedding Planning Blueprint course. I've taken my 19 years of wedding planning experience and created this course to help guide you from feeling overwhelmed, confused, and maybe even a little alone in the planning process to being informed, confident, and excited about planning again. This course is made up of five modules that will take you through the planning stages and include details on creating your budget and wedding design, hiring your vendors, food and beverage 101, rental checklists, and all of the pre-wedding details you need to get rid of FOWO, which is the fear of wedding oversight, amongst so many other topics that we cover. You can find all of the details over at planningcollective.com slash WPB course. And if you join before the end of January, you will also receive access to the weekly Zoom planning sessions. I hope to see you there.